Hello, everyone, and welcome to the IT Simplifier webinar, How to Improve Security Through Your Associates, Institutionalizing Security Policy. My name is Justin Kraft, and I'm the Director of Marketing at Bross Group. This webinar is designed to help you align your cybersecurity strategy with your goals and how to meet your security compliance standards. It is also designed to inform you about various services and tools at your disposal. I wanted to start by uh, giving you guys a brief description of who Bross Group is. Bross Group is a premier IT consulting and talent management firm dedicated to helping clients across multiple industries with their IT requirements. Bross Group has a unique intersection of service delivery and practice areas that enable clients to enhance value and promote nimble technology restructuring. Uh, Bross Group was founded in 2004. Um, we spent 10 years developing, architecting, and implementing successful solutions. We have uh, 17 years of experience with our consultants, uh, consistently recognized as best place to work. Um, Microsoft Gold, Gold Partner, nominated for uh, Colorado Companies to Watch, uh, Certified Women's Business Enterprise, Certified uh, National Business Women Business Owners Corporation. The four service areas Bross Group provides across all industries is staffing services, direct placement, IT consulting, and managed services. We are a rare breed that provides all four of these services. We do this because it allows you to, to go to one place for any of your IT staffing or organizational needs. The Bross Group IT consulting and managed service components provide many solutions aside from just business continuity and cybersecurity, which we're talking about today. They include SharePoint, Cloud Solutions, Office 365, Project Management, Mobile Solutions, Virtualization, and Strategy Planning. We have clients who utilize just one of these services or any combination of all of them. Ross Group has extensive experience in developing technology strategies and providing resources. In many cases, Ross Group not only develops the IT work, but also assists in building the strategies to make sure the solutions are a long-term answer. When you engage with Bross Group, you receive the best practices and strategies in combination with some of the brightest IT talent available. This is how Bross Group is able to deliver results and exceed expectations. So I'd like to introduce Cindy. She is our Security Program Director for Bross Group. She'll be your speaker today. Cindy combines a business-minded approach with strong technical acumen. Cindy is a certified project management professional, PMP certified Agile Scrum Master, Certified Six Sigma Greenbelt, Certified Information Systems Security Professional, and offers knowledge in COVID processes in ITIL Foundations and SDLC. So I will go ahead and hand this off to Cindy. Thanks, Justin. I want to remind everybody that uh, you can participate in the program by chatting or entering a question on the right-hand side of your panel and um, hopefully that will help you interact with me as we go along. Um, just so you know, I've got over 20 years of experience in this particular area, so I feel like I know just about everything and I've come across just about everything as far as it, as, uh, it goes in terms of trying to institutionalize security policies in an organization. So. Our agenda today is going to be the three primary security program components, uh, top 20 critical security controls and relevant security policies. Should you build or buy your security awareness and training program? Evaluating programs, content, and distribution methods. You should get awareness training and education, so often. Putting the security awareness and training program together, and next steps. So the three program components um, that I see in every one of these um, efforts is first beginning to develop your IT security policies that reflect your business's uh, needs and um, you want to make sure that they can be understood and followed by everyone. So they need to be written in such a way that people can actually understand. Uh, second, and this is what we're really going to focus on today, is informing users of their IT security responsibilities and training them on the security policies and procedures. And then finally, achieving long-term sustainment by establishing processes for monitoring and being prepared on a regular basis. <laughs> In our experience, security and awareness training should be focused on the organization's entire 
user population. It should begin with an effort that can be deployed and implemented in various ways, and we're going to talk about some of those. And it really needs to be aimed at all levels of the organization, including senior and executive level managers. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they are key to making sure that this sticks within the organization. The security program is really crucial because it's your vehicle for disseminating the security requirements and expectations that associates need to do their job. And an effective program is going to explain proper rules of behavior for the use of IT systems and information. It communicates IT security policies and procedures that need to be followed. It informs associates of the organization's expectations. And it really must receive and lay the basis for any sanctions imposed due to non-compliance, because accountability can only be derived from a fully informed, well-trained, and aware workforce. So last time we covered the top 20 security controls, and they are listed here in the order of importance as determined by the NSA. This list has been created by SAN, uh, the Council on Cyber Security, and the NSA. And if you're familiar with these controls, you know they don't directly address what associates need to do differently to help secure the organization. And what I've done here is highlight the security controls that are associate facing and should be included in your security policies. So let me um, take a minute and explain what I mean by associate. I am using that word to mean your employees, your contractors, full time, part time, partners, anyone that interacts with your IT systems. So I'm using that word associate <coughs> to cover all of those groups. So the controls that I believe need to be included and that are associate facing are inventory um, authorized and unauthorized devices and software, uh, security skills assessment and uh, training to fill the gaps, and that's what we're going to cover today, controlled use of administrative rights, controlled access based upon a need to know, data loss prevention, incident response, and management. So employees say and associates say, I can't follow the policy because I've got to get my job done. And they're they're right about getting their job done. They're not right about not following the policy. But despite years of education and training, many of our associates still don't understand the risks of their behavior. And despite years of warning and data breaches, many organizations are still being burned. So it happens every day. An employee is out of the office. He wants to get into his machine at work, and instead of using a, a proof secure method, he decides to email some confidential files to his home machine or other than Facebook. And then the next thing you know, your organization is sealed with a major data breach. So why don't they follow policies? They say they don't know them. If they do, no one's enforcing them. And besides, policies get in the way of their productivity. What we see in many cases, are, as associates have been told generally, some of the technologies are off limits, but they haven't been told explicitly what they can and cannot do with an organization's infrastructure and data. In some cases, maybe they've been told, but they make the decision to do it anyway, and then they don't realize they put the organization at risk for loss of revenue, reputation, threat of litigation, compliance failures that can result in fines, impact on functions and systems that can keep the organization from re reaching its strategic objectives. So how do we help associates get their jobs done, improve security through them? The way we do that is by institutionalizing security policies. And the way we do that is through these five steps. So first, we need to understand the flow of data. We need to determine what our access needs are on and off-site. We need to secure our corporate infrastructure. We need to be explicit about what can and cannot be done on the organization's network and with the organization's data. Then we need to begin communicating and training associates on a regular basis. This is not a one and done thing. This is a program, and I am suggesting that it be done annually, at least the training piece, and that awareness is done continuously. And then finally, once we achieve long-term sustainment, we want to monitor compliance of the policies. So three uh, common program models that you're going to see out there. 
are centralized, partially decentralized, and fully decentralized. And my guess is that at least 90% of us on the phone fit into one of these uh, three common programs. So centralized, all the responsibility resides with the central authority, like the CIO or the CISO or the IT security program manager. Partially decentralized, the training policy and strategy lies with the central authority, but the implementation responsibilities are distributed. Fully decentralized, only the policy development resides with the central authority, and then all of the other responsibilities are delegated to individual business units. So what you're going to notice in all three models is that the policy and strategy are centralized. Now, whether or not the distribution of the message is centralized or not, that's what um, really changes. But that's going to be whichever one you are um, – model you're going to follow is based upon the size and the geographic dispersion of your organization and your organizational roles and responsibilities and your budget allocation and authority. Regardless of which model you fit in, you're going to have to pay attention to these considerations. So um, what is your organization type and size? Are you public, private? Um, how geographically dispersed are you? And this is a really key question when it comes to the distribution method you're going to use. And again, we're going to talk about how to distribute the messages. Um, you want to look at specific regulations your organization has to follow. Are you TIPA, SOX, PCI? Um, do you have internal resources that can do this job? And not only do you, do you have people with the right skills, but do they have enough time to do the work? And does the organization have the necessary resources to maintain the material once it's been built? Um, is it more cost effective to develop the out, uh, material in-house, or do you want to outsource it? And is there a funding mechanism in place? So that's absolutely critical um, to ensure that you have your funding and that you have um, agreement on how the budget is going to be funded. In other words, is it going to be centrally funded, or again, is it going to be funded by um, specific departments? And that goes back to whichever model you're using. Um, do you have a person on staff that can effectively monitor contract activity? So let me give an example. Um, <clears throat> my company does a lot of business in healthcare. So we provide our consultants with HIPAA training, and we do that on an annual basis. And then we are allowed to provide our client companies with attestations that say um, these consultants have had training within the last 12 months. Now, there has to be somebody on the other side to receive that information. So that's what that question is about. You want to make sure that we're not the only contractors um, that our clients use, unfortunately, but there needs to be somebody on the other side to maintain um, the compliance from the vendor side. Um, Cindy, can I break in with a question? Of course. Um, we have a question that says, get staff trained and following policies need to come from the top down. How do we convince the top, the exec director, this is important? There are staff of 12, by the way. Uh, great question. And um, I am hopefully going to answer that for you in about two slides. So I'll come back to your question, but thank you for that, and we will definitely look that. And then um, the other is, out, does outsourcing allow for critical training delivery schedules to be met? Um, so who needs training? And this goes, I'm hopefully going to address your question right now. So, of course, I'm a security person, so I think there isn't an option in terms of uh, delivering security and awareness training. However, I appreciate that there are other people that don't have my same point of view. I think it is um, fairly easy to convince your executive director, especially if you have uh, compliance uh, or regulations that you need to meet, um, even if you don't. Let's just look at Target, for example. Um, they're like the hottest thing going right now. They're estimated to have to spend $3.6 billion in fines and legal fees. Um, for the breach that happened over Christmas. So 
in order to avoid even the smallest of fees and fines, um, I think security awareness and training is absolutely critical. So um, if you need help convincing your executive director, I would be happy to help you. So um, where I see that uh, we need awareness and training is really awareness needs to be given to everyone. So everyone in the organization, including your executive director, on down to the janitor, uh, needs to be aware of security. They need to be able to recognize a concern and how to respond accordingly. Let me give you an example. Um, a stranger is walking around in your office. Okay. Uh, what do you do? Um, so the appropriate thing to do would not to be ignore that person, but to approach them and ask them if you can help them, what they're doing there. Um, if they don't belong there, then escort them out of the office. Um, if people are not aware that that's an issue, they may just ignore that person. So awareness is about getting people to recognize um, that there could be an issue and to respond accordingly. Training is uh, really to produce security skills and competencies in all associates. So we want to make sure that, for instance, if you had a badging system, that uh, people are trained to keep other people from tailgating. In other words, following them um, behind without badging in. So training would help the associates understand, hey, I'm supposed to badge in every time I go in the door. I'm not supposed to tailgate. I'm not supposed to let other people tailgate on me. So um, they would turn around and hopefully tell the person behind them that they would need to badge in. So all associates get awareness and training. Education is a little bit different, and that is where you really want to focus deep security skills and competencies in groups like your security team. Because not everybody needs to know intrusion detection or how to um, block network intrusion or configure a firewall, but um, we do need to know the basics of security and, again, how to respond. So an awareness and training program really is a living thing. And the reason that this is depicted in the circle is because you want to keep it alive. So you want to do a needs analysis, design, develop, deliver, monitor, and each year, again, do a needs analysis, design, develop, deliver, monitor to keep it fresh and alive. <clears throat> Excuse me. When you begin your needs analysis, you want to start with um, asking questions, what needs to be done? Um, what are we currently doing? How is it currently being delivered? Is there a learning management system? Let me take a moment to explain what a learning management system is. Um, it is an application that tracks who has had training, when they had training, and what the scores on the training uh, were the last time they took, took the training. So you can either have these systems on-site or off-site, um, but it is important that you have a mechanism to track who's had training. Uh, you need to identify where the gaps are between what needs to be done and what's actually being done, and what behavior you want to reinforce and what skills you want associates to learn and apply on their job. So the key question is, what do all associates need to know regarding security? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I typically start with a list of topics, and this is the list that I generally give my uh, clients, and um, password usage and management, unknown email and attachments, how to deal with those. So over 90% of our security incidences in America come from email attachments. So it is very important that our associates know how to deal with those. Uh, web usage, uh, what's allowed, what's not allowed, um, tell people. If you're monitoring their activity, you know, they want to know that. Uh, laptop security while on travel, address both the physical and information security issues, and specifically shoulder surface. So if I'm in an airport or on an airplane and I'm working on a business document, 
I really want to be aware if somebody's looking over my shoulder and, and they could actually even be taking a picture of my uh, machine. So I'm going to be very aware of my surroundings. We also want to tell associates whether or not the organization allows personally owned systems and software at work. Um, if this is allowed, uh, you're typically going to have some software copyright issues, and that's the reason why a lot of organizations don't allow personal systems on their um, corporate networks. Uh, access control issues, over 50% of organizations have got people that have too much access. So you need to address least privilege and separation of duties. You also want to uh, address social engineering, incident response, so who to contact and what do I do. Use of encryption and transmission of sensitive confidential information over the internet, specifically your personal accounts. So I can tell you a story about a healthcare system who had doctors who were emailing uh, patient files to their personal accounts on Yahoo and Gmail. And when we caught it, um, it was after the fact, we had to go through a significant exercise to get that information removed from uh, Yahoo and Gmail's servers. And um, the reason we needed it removed was, was obvious, but it shouldn't have been out there in the wild and it shouldn't have ever been transmitted. And, unencrypted. So um, we definitely fix that problem at that climate, but I'm sure that you have um, issues like that, hopefully, that uh, that, you, that you're addressing. And um, anyway, individual accountability, and you want to explain what this means in the organization, and I suggest that you get acknowledgments or a written signature annually from every associate. I would also suggest that you get a written um, acknowledgement on your acceptable use policy. But uh, again, I would do that, whether or not it's on paper or it's electronic, I would make sure that you have people's acknowledgements each year that says, yes, I promise that I will follow these policies. So what are your options in terms of training delivery? Um, again, a lot of this, will depend on your geographic dispersion and the size of your organization. So what we're doing today, it's called virtual instructor led training. And typically, it's going to support two-way um, interactive audio, which is what we're doing. You can do video instruction. We're not doing that today, but you could. Um, this makes this technique a little bit more interactive, and it's more interactive than, say, web-based training or computer-based training. I'm going to show you an example of web-based training, a sample that I think is very good um, next. And um, But this technique is really popular. A lot of us have taken web-based training. And the great thing about it is you can study independently, learn at your own pace, and typically testing and accountability features can be built into the, into the programs to gauge your performance. Non-web or computer-based training, many of us may remember getting a computer disk uh, for training in the past when we didn't have uh, web-based material. This is typically not that um, popular. It, it is popular, but not that uh, as popular as web-based training unless you're somewhere like Abu Dhabi and you've got to put a disk on the back of the camera and give it to someone. Um, I would suggest really trying to focus on the virtual instructor-led web-based training or good old standby instructor-led training. And this is, a thing, this is training that we've all grown up with. Um, the biggest advantage of this technique is that it's interactive. And the disadvantages are scheduling enough classes for everybody in the audience to attend. And typically, um, there's large travel costs, even if it's moving the instructor from place to place for the students to the instructor. That's a downside of that, especially if you've got a distributed workforce. Um, although, the nice thing about instructor-led training is you can incorporate web-based training and virtual instructor-led training into um, that event, and that makes it a lot more flexible. 
I think everyone prefers instructor-led training, but unfortunately in the day and age we live in the economy with the way it is, it's not always a viable option. So typically we are having to um, rely more and more on web-based training and virtual instructor-led training. So I'm going to show you an example of what I consider to be very good security training. It is from the SANS Institute. It's called Securing the Human. And we are going to watch a one-minute video of uh, one of the modules, and it's called You Are the Target. So I'm going to begin the video now. And you should see the video and hear the sound in just a minute. So that, that is an example of web-based training. Again, that self-paced and highly effective. I really like the SANS training because they also provide you with a lot of awareness um, messages as well, and I'm going to show you some of those next. So you really want to get your message out there. You want it to be in a variety of um, presentations. You want to use a lot of different media, um, pins, key fobs, post-it notes, posters, screensavers, newsletters, desk-to-desk -desk alerts, organization-wide email messages, um, teleconferencing, video, structure-led sessions, IT security days, um, brown bag seminars, a pop-up calendar with security contact information and monthly security tips mascots, crossword puzzles, word programs, anything you can do to keep the message out there on a consistent basis. This is an example of, a, of the awareness poster. This is presented also by Zoom, and we watched You Are a Target, and this is the poster that goes along with that course. In addition, they also provide Newsletters for you, so you can customize it. You'll see it's got like your logo here. Uh, you can use these topics. I highly recommend these because they are so uh, well put together and they are also very consistent in their messaging, and that is key to um, making it stick, making security stick. I always say security doesn't stay sold. You have to keep selling it. And it's unfortunately true, but I'm going to get to your executive support. Um, so that's your kind of next step in the journey. You need to communicate your plan. So you've decided you have a, um, you know what you're trying to protect. You know what policies, you know what information, you know what devices you're trying to protect. You know who's going to build it now, whether it's internal or external. You know how you're going to deliver it by an instructor or over the web or virtual instruction. And then you've got your topic list and how you want to uh, present it. So you need to communicate the plan to your executives and make sure that you're clear about the results of the program and the benefits to the organization. And you're going to have to address uh, funding. And, for example, you know, managers need to know if the cost to implement the awareness and training program is going to be totally funded centrally or if their budgets are going to be impacted to cover their share of the expense of implementing the program. And once you have executive support, it's no longer an option. This is something that they need to budget for. 
You need to be very clear about your roles and responsibilities, your schedule and completion requirements, and you want to emphasize consistency over time is key to improving the security through the subject. Again, it's not a one and done. It must be repeated over and over um, in different formats. So when you launch your program, you want to focus on associate engagement. Don't expect people to know the security policies um, right off the bat, and they're not going to understand the benefits that they're going to deliver immediately. But again, you're going to need to take kind of a sophisticated march, marketing approach to inform, educate, and persuade people to change the way they do their work. At each step, I would suggest the marketing techniques um, identify which people need convincing and how best to convince them. So, one of the things you want to do is employ a, a shakedown phase and check the uh, scale of the program. So, for instance, uh, some of you may decide, hey, we're going to implement a learning management system because we can use it not only to track security training, but we have lots of other compliance training we need to track. So if you're implementing a system as well as the training, uh, this is a really good idea to step the shakedown process. And what I mean by that is first you want to pilot your training and your process changes with about 2 to 5 percent of your subjects. And that's going to reveal some basic problems and lead to a go no go decision. And then second, you're going to deploy the training and process changes to about 15% of the associates. And that's going to reveal any challenges you have operating at scale. So for instance, if you decide that you're going to launch the training on a Tuesday at noon, you don't want all of your servers to crash if, you know, 5,000 people try to get the server at one time. So that's why you really need to test it at scale. And then finally, you're going to deploy training to all the users, um, and you want a deep involvement of your managers. And then I suggest using certified learning coaches from the staff. So I would take people that have an interest in security or perhaps some of compliance folks and have them um, operate as your learning coaches so that the – so after the training event, employees have someone to go to to ask informal questions. You want to use your social network to invent continuous improvement into the fabric of the process. And this is probably a new concept for a lot of you, but um, recently Red Robin released a, a story about how they're using social, their social networking to gather improvements in their program, and they're literally allowing, if you've been to Red Robin, you'll see their associates walking around with tablets or iPads, and um, they use those not only to take your order, but they also use those if they see a security incident or they um, have a suggestion for improvement. They are using their social network um, to provide feedback back to the security department. And they're communicating, they're listening, they're capturing ideas, and they're continually improving their program. Finally, you want to measure reward and celebrate success. So uh, one key to continuous improvement is to identify people who are succeeding and calling attention um, to what they did, as well as how it paid off for them. And then in this way, people can see um, who are the people that are not yet engaged can see um, you know, kind of what's in it for them and how it's relevant. So I'll give you an example. Again, somebody's coming to the office, it's a stranger, they intend to steal our purses and a laptop. Somebody has stopped them and asked them to leave the office before that bad deed can be done. And to measure uh, that, to reward that, to celebrate that success would be very appropriate to tell everyone in the office, hey, this person has kept us secure by asking this person to leave the uh, leave the office. So that would really help people get engaged and see what they can do in order to help the organization stay safe. So consistency is the key. You want to build awareness, you want to build understanding, and you want to build preference. And what I mean by that, when you build awareness, managers and associates learn about a new way of doing things and why it's important. 
To build understanding, managers and associates begin to understand the impact of the change on how they work. And then building preference, managers and associates own the outcome because they believe in the benefits to them personally. So the, in the green boxes, I've kind of got some ideas um, of how you can make these happen. So for building awareness, uh, having the CEO launch the program at an annual on conference or meeting, town hall, um, is a great way to get it kicked off. Giving managers the tools and content to communicate to their associates ahead of time and making sure that you've got them in line with you prior to launching the program is a big benefit. And you also want to encourage managers to use their leadership social network to ask and answer questions about security. Building understanding, you want to break into groups of managers to solve problems and strategize um, specifically around uh, security issues. You want to select up and come employees, perhaps, as your cert certified learning coaches so that they can help train others. And use those coaches as your feet on the ground to find and report problems with your program. Again, continuous improvement. You want to assist managers in mastering policies and procedures, and you want to use your certified learning coaches to help new employees incorporate security policies and procedures into the work. And use your employee social network to answer questions and gather best practices. So the next steps, um, again, we want to be clear. You want to write or edit your existing policies to help associates understand what they can and cannot do in the corporate infrastructure and with corporate information. You want to institutionalize your security policies. And then you want to make it stick. So on May the 6th, we're going to cover how to take this to the next level and um, how you reduce your risk by monitoring and enforcing security policies. These are my resources. I have more in my notes section, so hopefully when you download this uh, presentation, you'll, in the notes section, just look there, because there are some more references as well. But I have put in the SANS 20 security control, um, SANS security policies. Again, I'm a big fan of them because they've got it pulled together for us, and it's a very good um, resource for us, um, especially if you're having to do it on your own. Um, NIST publications regarding uh, security awareness and training. The SANS training. There's also other organizations like Inspired with eLearning and Global Learning Systems and Security Monitor that also produce um, security and awareness training programs, and I would suggest looking at those as well. Some of them allow you to um, customize the content and put in your own security policies or at least links to the policies, and that's really useful. So when you're evaluating these programs, again, once you know what it is that you need to train your people on, it is very, it's a whole lot easier to look at these programs to see if they meet your needs or not. So I am going to um, ask for questions, and then uh, when we're finished with questions, turn it back over to Justin. So if you've got questions, please um, put them into the chat. And also, for the person that asked the executive level question, if you've got a follow-up to that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much for the conference. And uh, Cindy, I don't see any uh, questions. Oh, there's one. Um, do you have any good resources regarding mobile policies? Uh, mobile devices? MDM or? BYOD. Oh, BYOD. Absolutely. Um, Bring your own device for those who don't know. Yes. I, absolutely, I, I do, and I can provide those to you um, offline. So if you can provide me with your email address, I'll be happy to send them to you. And, or you can send them to my email address. You don't have to send them in the chat. <laughs> well, there, That's my email address on the uh, on the slide up there. It's cgibson at brassgroup.com, and then my direct number is 303-945-2713. Uh, mobile device management question, too, on, on that same line. 
I'm sorry, Jensen. Uh, good resource uh, regarding mobile device management. Yes, I'm happy to supply those. Okay. Um, they are not in this presentation, but I'm happy to supply some good resources for you. Okay, perfect. Uh, it, we'll go ahead and uh, supply those to anybody who would like those. Um, it looks like everyone's kind of interested in that, actually, Cindy. So I'll uh, I'll make sure that that's included in the, either the thank you or if you contact us uh, directly. Again, you have a couple. If you want to go back to that slide, Cindy. Of course. Um, you can contact Cindy directly right there at cgibson at brossgroup.com. You can call us, um, and we can also uh, we're also supplying the slide deck as well. And, and that, that may be a good topic for us to cover in another webinar. Um, yeah, that, if that's something that you guys are really interested in, it is definitely something that I am interested in as well. I know that it's a primary concern for a lot of stuff, and so we'd be happy to put a webinar together as well. And actually, just uh, so all the attendees know too, we uh, we do have a survey coming up at the end of this. So any technologies or pieces you'd like to hear about, I believe we have uh, a question related to that as well. So if there's anything else you guys want to hear about, we do uh, we do uh, supply a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge and information at this uh, at this organization. So we can uh, we can help with any of that stuff. Okay. So in absence of other questions, uh, Justin, would you like to take it? From here? Yep. Okay. Um, increasing the value of today's webinar experience. We do have other uh, areas for, for knowledge and information. Um, you can visit our brossgroup.com and our blog. Um, not only do we have or will we have today's presentation, I'll actually have a video um, available on there too. It'll just take me a couple days to put that together. Um, we offer our old uh, webinars that we've done in the past. We have very, very useful blogs from uh, developers that we have on around sp specific topics, um, how to choose, why to choose, what to do, not just with security, but any kind of IT-related information. Uh, if you would like us to help you with any kind of audits or or any information around security, not, not just security, but could be IT-related, maybe you're having SharePoint problems, whatever it is, any of those areas that we cover on an IT consulting basis, we'd love to talk to you. Please do reach out to us, um, and we can, if we can't help you, maybe point you in the right direction to someone who can. Again, we're all about helping you out and making sure that what you need is satisfied. Uh, again, she mentioned come back on May 6th. I'll have uh, that included in the thank you as well. I don't have that up on the blog yet, but I do have a sign-up page created, so I'll have that ready to go pretty quickly. Um, that'll be uh, how to reinforce your security policies. And again, check out the schedule for upcoming Bross Group webinars. We will uh, be sending stuff out to you guys if you've uh, opted into getting our communications. Um, again, contact uh, us, not just our account executives. You can contact us directly if you feel more comfortable doing that about helping writing your security policy. And one last thing, here is our next mini event calendar. We do have some other stuff that's coming up. I know we have a predictive analytic uh, model that we uh, have done for some uh, association organizations that you can utilize even if you're not an association um, that is very useful in helping maintain membership or bring back customers. So that's gonna be coming up too. I don't have that listed on here. Uh, but a really great topic that a lot of people want to hear about, and you guys will be getting that on your uh, thank you email as well. Um, but on May 6th, uh, that enforcing your security policy and making it stick. We are also speaking, uh, Rick Bauckham, our CTO and COO, will be speaking May 19th through the 21st at the Digital Now Conference in Nashville. This is a large, large event around technology and what to do with technology, particularly for associations with that Digital Now Conference. Uh, there's a $200 discount if you uh, do the link from Brass Group that'll be included on this uh, on this webinar slide deck. So we'll look for the slide deck again to come out to all of you guys. Um, and I think that's all I have to cover today. We look forward to seeing you guys in the future events. I would like you guys, if you could, please do fill out that uh, that survey that's on the back end of this uh, webinar. But we appreciate you guys taking some time to be on here with us today. And if we can answer any questions in the future please let us know, and we'd love to help you out. So thank you again, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. Thank you for your time and attention. We'll see you next time.